Hey guys, welcome back to another Lego Star Wars Rogue One set review. Hey guys, this time we have the U Rebel Ewing Fire set. Hey guys, this set is number 75155. It's ages, it's ages 8 to 14. Now it has 659 pieces. It retails for $79.99 or $80 US dollars. And now, guys, this set here is like the only set in the Rogue One wave for 2016 that is based off of Rebels. And so. Yeah, it, it kind of makes you feel overwhelmed. If you're a Rebels fan, then it kind of makes you feel overwhelmed by Imperial vehicle, all kinds of different, different Imperial vehicles. But it's always nice to get a Rebel set. And so, because even though I'm not building a Rebel army, it's always nice to get a Rebel ship. Especially for this kind of ship, because this is like a, a gunship type of vehicle where it can transport a lot of troops and such into the, into the battle. And this is basically the main vehicle that, um, Cassian and or a Jigger so used to in their Rogue One team and they, they used to fly around to different planets like hit Jaya or Scarif or Eadu to find Jin, Jin Urso's father which we just found out in the new trailer they just came out Thursday um and steal Death Star plans along with the, finding her father so yeah finding her father bringing him back getting him out of the Imperial Custody, so he has to so he has to finish building the Death Star. So yeah, this is gonna be an interesting movie, especially for this type of vehicle because this is gonna be one of the main vehicles that are, that's gonna be based off the Rebels in this new movie. It's, it's, it's probably gonna be used a lot. So yeah, and so the main figure line up for for the set here is very impressive. I'm very glad that they put some of these characters in. It's some particular characters in this set because this is the only set we could get. The main characters for Rogue One in regarding Craig's show and some other smaller sets that have uh, some main characters in there. Then these are the two actual main characters of the movie, it, it, excluding, like I said, excluding Craig, and so it, which is the main villain, right? And also Darth Vader. Um, they would get Jinger or so, Captain and Cassian Andor, which are the two main characters. So this is the only way you could get Jinger or so and and Cassian Andor. And I, I don't know, for them being in the set only for right now, um, <clears throat> I'm just going to tell you guys this right now. If you guys are looking for getting the main characters like Craig, the Death Trooper, Jin Erso, and Kansan Andor, that I highly recommend just getting the Craig Shaw and the Ewing, because then those two will be a good combo to battle against each other. That will be, be a good combo. Um, the ATST, the Hover Tank, and the TIE Striker. The ATSD and the Hover Tank, those are the two other sets that have the main characters, um, Baze Malbus and Chirrut Ingwe. Um, the TIE Striker has basically the Imperial TIE Pilots as such. And so, for the Ewing, this is a good, this is a good set. The set, the pricing on this set is a little off by like 10 bucks. I always recommend having this be $70 to 80 because of the piece count. But overall for the main figures and such and the playability in this vehicle, I think it's a good price for the set. And so, let's get to the main figures, guys, and then we'll go into the vehicle and all the play features and such. Then we'll get into Final Thoughts after that. So let's go, guys. Okay, guys, so the first main figure we have here is Jen Urso herself, Lieutenant Jen Urso, in her Jaya Iadu time, in her Jaya Iadu costuming. <laughs> and so. For her, her weapons are like a little blaster pistol in this baton type of weapon. I think she uses that as like a baton or something like that. I don't think it's a rocket launcher. Some people are thinking it's like a rocket launcher. I can't understand why because it kind of looks like that. But I think it's just like a baton type weapon that she uses to attack her am her enemies at a close range, at a very very close range when the enemy is like right on top of her. And so I think it's a it's a pretty cool weapon. Like a baton would be like a weapon that you would use for like. Fast and quick attacks and with a with a, for close range enemies. Instead of like, it, 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 if you can get your blaster pistol or whatever out quick enough, you can use your baton, your, your baton, which is pretty cool. And so for Jinger, so um, her face is nicely detailed. I gotta admit, it's nicely detailed. With the lips and everything, and the pink lips and the and the eyes and such, very nicely detailed. It really portrays Felicity Jones very well. Got a mess. And so we take a look at the back of her face here. She's got a double-sided face. She's got angry face, more of a angry face. Like a, I'm gonna 
Like, anyway, like she's got that determined face, like a very angry type of well, coat, which is fine. So yeah, like you were saying, main rebel traverse in the movies, which is pretty cool. And now the the hat here is pretty neat. This is uh, this is first for me because this hat here, this headpiece, is like this hat. And so it has the white goggles as always for like all the rebel hats and such from the past, and such with around such. And so on the side here, this time around, we got some wool and uh, hair for for the first time for me at least. I don't know if this is from uh, if this has been seen in many different scenes. And for Lego, but for me, for the Star Wars theme, theme for me, at least this is the first time I've seen it. This has been done before, with the like hair being molded into the hat, which is pretty cool. And because at first I thought like, so is, is Jin like a heavy hair? Is this main figure Jin like a heavy hair at all or anything like that? And when I, when I got the set, it made the main figure for like both to put her together. I was like. Wow, they actually bold in the hair, so they actually cared <laughs> about the, the look of the main figure for once, because that, that has never been seen in quite a while for way from way it goes. So yeah, and so the detailing on the front here and the back here is first covered by a cloth piece. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take her part pretty practically. She she also has this backpack type of thing on the side to go on top of the cloth. It's pretty interesting. It's got some nice detail on that. So that's nice additional detail that's been, that was needed. Get the quad off here and notch her off the stand here. Get her back on the stand here. And this is what the cloth looks like. It's got this nice soft cloth. Nice with detail. It's this gray color. And so for the main figure's torso. It's that's the detail with the rebel jacket and everything. It really portrays it, the look of what Felicity Jones is gonna look like in this movie. It's for Jingers' look in the movie for pretty much almost the entire movie, I think, or maybe the entire movie. We don't know yet. We don't know yet for, from what we're seeing in the trailers. It's just pretty much gonna look the same throughout the movie. So yeah, she may have some additional jackets or something on a specific point, maybe I don't know, but it's possible. It's still on the back here. Not, not to over, I'm gonna get her back up. Um, on the back here, the jacket continues on the back, just like any other, uh, all the other Rebel Troopers from the beginning in this World One wave. Very nice with details for all that. And the pants, the legs, this just is just this black color. So that's that's kind of expected for a main character, but it betraying a main figure form. But I think it's okay because it, for us having the cloth and this backpack and such, I think this that's enough detail to. Make me go, uh, give me fade away from the lake, de from the lack of lake de detail. So what we're gonna do is get the cloth, uh, the backpack back on, and the head, <laughs> and the uh, hat, and then we'll get into the next main figure. So let's get everything back on her. It's gonna be kind of difficult to get this backpack on, so it makes me a little time here to get this backpack back on. I'm have to stand here. <laughs> Get the poor aside, guys, so I can get this backpack back on. <laughs> get the cloth arranged here in the right way here, and such. And now I got now that I got all the cloth and such back on. <laughs> because I remember at first when I put the main figure together when I was building the set. My first guy, our first Friday and such, it was a pain in the neck to get the backpack on. And so now, now that doing it a second time, it wasn't as bad, so that's good. <laughs> that was gonna take me a lot longer, but it didn't take me as long as I thought. Get the head back on her, and then we'll get the hat back on her. And so that is Jing Urso, guys. And so let's go on to the next main figure, Captain Kazang Andor. Okay guys, so the next main figure here we have is Captain Canteen Andor. And so this is the second protagonist that's going to be in the movie that's been known the most out of all of them. And so he's going to be helping Jing Erso in the movie capture the Death Star points of helping her find her father, um, Galen Erso, I think I remember, right, if it, that's his name. I think it's like Galen Erso or something like that. Um, and 
for the detail on him, it looks like he's gonna be on. It looks like these guys are gonna be on a cold winter wet planet. So I, it, that explains why he has the wear the jacket on, the wear coat on, everything, and all the gear, everything, the binoculars, the weight, the vest, and such. All the detail and for dark blue, everything, and the white gloves and such. That I think, yep, he has the white gloves. Um. That's the detail, I got him in the detail on the way, that's the detail, um, he has a blaster, a, a normal trooper, there you go, like a trooper blaster, um, the hair piece, that's the detail as well, perfect hair piece for Captain Cassidy and Andor, especially for the actor that's playing him, I don't remember his name, but it really portrays the actor very well, um, take a look at the back here, that's the detail with the cult, it could stand with the back and such, that's the detail, take the hair piece off, he has a double sided face, he's got a more of a confused face, and then, uh, the front he's got like, more of a happy face, but like, mm -hmm. he, he looks like a, it's like a Han Solo smirk, basically. <laughs> That's why I think of it, that smirk, like a Han Solo smirk. <laughs> and so, that's Captain Cassie Andor, not that much to this character in first main figure, like Jing Erso, because Jing Erso has all this detail, extra, extra detail on her, but for the Captain Cassie Andor, I think this is a very, this is like a perfect made figure here for Jinger, or not Jinger, so Captain Kansi and Andor. So let's get on to the next made figure, which is Bastan, or Bastan, or whatever, how you pronounce it. Okay guys, so the next made figure here we, ha we have is Bastan, or Bastan, I'm just gonna call him Bastan. Um, and this has been a, a, test, a very anticipated character for Rogue One because we've seen him in the Celebration Reel and we saw him for, for like a few, like a, for, at least for a second in the new, in the latest, re, most recent Rogue One trailer that came out Thursday so this has been a very anticipated character because he's been played by a very, very familiar actor that, that played Witchet in Episode 6 for Charlie J. so yeah, that's pretty big for this, it just is very, it, Broad side character in this movie, so yeah, and he's supposed to be like a, one of the rebel troopers and such that we're going to see in the movie and such. I think it's going to be end up being like a lieutenant maybe or a commander. I don't know, but he's probably going to be uh, bigger and no, a, a lot more known for being in the rebel alliance than a other trooper and a, a other random trooper. And so yeah, and so as you can see, guys, the face sculpted, the head mold, got the face for the head. Very nice with detail too, because he is gonna be a, a new alien for Star Wars. So yeah, very nice with detail. I got him with the face and such. Very nice with detail. The hair, the hair on the back and such. Nice with detail. I mean, he's got a normal blaster, like any other Rebel trooper out there. And the detailing on the legs and the torso. Very nice with detail as well. Did for portraying his armor, his design and such. So yeah. Now the back here, very nice with detail and such. With the dark green armor and everything. It's all that, nice, but Stan, guys, and not really much this May figure because, well, this is a whole, uh, this is like a big, big giant mole for his head, which is okay. So, that is the Stan, guys. It, as I said before, this is gonna be a very, very anticipated character for Rogue One because we've seen him in their celebration reel, such that everyone's made a big deal about him, which I can't understand because it's a new alien. That we've never seen before in Star Wars ever, and so yeah, I think I can understand why people are making a really big deal about this guy. And so let's get on to the next, yeah, the next main figure that we get in set the Rebel Ewing pilot. Okay, guys, so here is the next main figure we have here. It is the Rebel Ewing pilot. As you can see, guys, this is the brand new pilot that we've never seen before in Star Wars because most Rebel pilots have the Orange pilot suit on, and the orange and white one, and pilot suits on. And for the first time in quite a while, from what I remember, we see a rebel pilot in a blue and white pilot gear, which is pretty cool. And the pilot helmet is a brand new helmet that we never seen before. It's kind of similar to Jeff Porkins, or Jeff Porkins, or something like that. And so, with the like the checker flag, pants on his helmet and such, yeah. I can't, I can't. Jack Fork is I think it, it was. I remember all the Rebel names for the original trilogy, so it's the, it's one of those pilots from episode 4. So just, it, it was going to be off there, just with it, it with the pilots from episode 4 and the trench run. So yeah. 
Let's go with that because I don't want to make you guys say comment down below complaining. No, it was this pilot. It was this pilot. You know, it's so <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember all the names of the pilots, but I know it was one of the pilots that was in the trench run in episode 4. That's how fun so I know. I remember. Brought the back, so yeah, let's <laughs> go with that. And so, the detailing on this guy is very nicely detailed, like, like all the other recent we made uh, Rebel pilots that we've got in multiple sets for uh, the past couple of years. And so, yeah, and he's got a blaster pistol, and like a normal blaster pistol. Detailing, as I said before, nicely detailed, as expected. And the helmet, nicely detailed as well, the, with the checker flag pairing and such. Take a look at the back here. That's the detail as well, as usual. And take the helmet off. He's got a double sided face. He's got like a, like a beard, scary look, kind of like he's about to die or something. <laughs> and then on the front, he's got a smile. Rebel, anyway, not anyway, Rebel smile, pilot smile. So we've seen it many other sets. And what's cool about this head is that he has the orange goggles down. That's pretty cool. And so that is the Rebel Ewing pilot guy. Not, not so much for this guy because we've seen. I mean, just detailing on a lot of Rebel Pilots before, but the only di the only big difference that we would see is the pairing of the helmet and the torso in the legs. And so all the detailing on him basically with the different colors and such. So that's pretty cool. And so let's get into the last May figure guy May figure guys the normal Rebel Trooper. He's just called a Rebel Trooper. <laughs> Okay guys, so here's the last main figure we have in the set here, and he is a Rebel Trooper. And as you can see, this is a very different Rebel Trooper we got in, comparing to all the other Rebel Troopers we got in this, in this World 1 wave. This was also completely different. <laughs> so it's a completely different, unique looking Rebel Troopers. And so as you can see, his his hat is very similar to the TF4 Episode 4 Rebel Trooper hats, when it was white and black. So yeah, and they're very nice nitpick there on the on the hat way though. Very nice and very betrayed in a very similar way. <laughs> and so it goes all around and such, nice with detailing of the pairing and such, of the hand and such. That's with detail, I gotta admit. And the detailing on the torso and the legs, as you would expect on a rubble trooper torso and legs, with all the vests, weapons on his torso, the jackets and such. The detail in the armor and such, nice and detailed with the green and the browns and the grays, nice and detailed. And the tan wings and such, with the pouches and such, nice and detailed as well. He's got a normal blaster, as you would expect, because he is a rebel trooper after all. <laughs> and so I took a look at the back here, he's got his little hoodie there on the back here with all the vests and such. And back also, and so take a look here, there's no double sided face on this guy, which is okay. And he's got a Determining pet face, like we've seen in all the um, like a pretty, like first or officers, like we recently since last year. So yeah, very nice to see this face again. I'm hoping that Waco decides to make it, to put these faces in the stormtroopers and imperial troopers as such, and, and, and possibly clones. I don't think they're gonna do clones again, but. More leaning towards the Imperial Troopers, like the Stormtroopers, the Tide Pilots and such, that they keep using the clone angry, the angry clone hat on. Way go. If you're listening to this review, use this face. I gotta admit, this is a way better face for the Imperial and the angry clone hat. So don't cheap out on it, Lego. It just start using a different head, please. <laughs> and that's, I'm just gonna leave that off there. So yeah. So that's the Rebel Trooper, guys. And that's the last main figure we have in the set. We get five. Brand new exclusive main figures to the set in the set only for the time being. And so let's go into the Rebel Ewing Fire and then we'll end up with the final touch after that. So let's go guys. Okay guys, so here here is the Rebel Ewing Fire, and as you can see guys, it's a very nice and unique looking vehicle. But it's very it, it really reminded me of the Republic gunship from the Clone Wars and so because this is actually a gunship trans I mean, just like a rebel transport, just like a rebel gunship. But it's not actually called a gunship, it's called the Ewing Fire. But I really think of it as a gunship because it has the ability to bring in rebel troops into battle, so that's pretty cool from the from the air. So that's pretty cool. Just like a gunship. And so this is a very weird looking ship, and I got I've seen weird stuff in my day for Star Wars. But 
I don't think I ever saw anything this weird before, <laughs> ever. It's so, because with the engines, all of the engines exposed, to, uh, so exposed, like, they could probably become the TIE Strikers, the primary targets <laughs> very easily. And so, yeah, it, for the main feature, we got like three main features to the set, the Spirit Assures, the open cockpit, the open doors of the bomb, and actually there's four, so my bad, there's four, the cockpit, the Spirit Assures, the Opening doors to the area on the bomb of the ship, the rear part of the ship, and these movable wings, which we'll be doing right now. That's what it looks like from the front. The color scheme is nice, I got them in the yellow, the blue, and the white. I like this color scheme and such, and mostly gray on the bomb. It's pretty cool. Really like the color scheme and such, but I don't know. The ship, that, the, the way it was made it was from Lucasfilm, um, I don't know. At first, I was like, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but, now that I've as such, I don't think it's that bad of a vehicle. I, got my, I, don't, think that's, I don't think it's that bad. So, the, you can pull, you, you can move these wings around. They're connected by ball joints, so they can just come right off. And there's another ball, ball, ball joint right here, and a connector right here. So they can, so they can connect them from here. And transform it into a completely different ship that looks like this. <laughs> With the wings spread out like that, like uh, like a falcon, <laughs> like an actual an uh, an a fa a falcon bird, like a bird named the falcon. <laughs> and so, or a hawk. Um, because when I first saw this, I was like, in this way, I was like, this really reminds me of a bird. <laughs> it actually reminds me of a, of a bird. Like this, it, it sounds like a huge bird. <laughs> and so. I don't know, when I saw this, I was like, I was like, um, this is the weirdest thing in Star Wars I've ever seen, it, ever. <laughs> this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen before in Star Wars, and it, it, it still is to me, it, to me it is, still. And I'm like, wow, I never thought we'd go with this nuts for Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars vehicles, but they did, apparently, <laughs> with this vehicle, the Ewing Fire for Rogue One, which... I don't know, for, for this being a being called Rogue One, I don't see it being that bad. <laughs> I don't see it being that bad for being a Rogue One, so, yeah. Because I like the uniqueness in the vehicle, in these in kinds of vehicles, especially in Star Wars, because if it wasn't a Star Wars, if, if, it, was, if it was this unique, then I wouldn't be too sure about it, but if it were being a Star Wars vehicle, I can completely understand why. <laughs> I can completely understand why this, it would look this weird. <laughs> So yeah, this is what it looks like in this mode here. I'm not sure this is the flying, the flying mode. It's gonna be a while in the air, or if this is gonna be the landing mode. I'm not quite sure yet because I haven't seen the movie yet. As I'm making this review, and so I gotta tell you, <laughs> I'm gonna be going in the theater, probably uh, no, and not really knowing much about the U-Wing. So <laughs> I probably, probably once I get out of the theater after I see Rogue One, I'm probably gonna be like. I'm probably going to you gonna be like, wow, that was a cool vehicle. <laughs> wow, and, and that vehicle did some shit <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> so yeah, I got it. This is a good vehicle. I, I, I like the design of the vehicle a little bit. And, and I gotta admit, the car skips great. The functions for the ship are great. It's such, it's just, wow. It's probably just one of the weird, one of the weirdest ships I've ever seen. <laughs> so, let's get back in it. In its normal mode that we start with, or right, just the starting mode, we'll just call it that starting mode. <laughs> and so, let's get into the last few features of the vehicle. Um, this is what it looks like from the side. The booster engines right here are nice with detail and such. This is because all these blue stripes here, they're all stickers on all four engines. That's the detail from the back as well. This is what it looks like from the back, by the way. That's the de nice with detail. This is what it looks like from the side. On the other side here, front view. And so the spirit washers are right in there, and the main cans are right here. So that's pretty cool. Um, now the, for the cockpit, the way you open it, it's not really a normal way you would open a, co a cockpit from any other Star Wars vehicle because well, this, this is actually kind of blended in there. You can like really grab it, pull it open like this. It's gonna be hard to do that, but the easiest way to do it is this. Is pretty, uh, this was this was a smart idea by way you go. If you push these, it was just one of these, it'll push the cockpit open just a little bit so you can get your finger under there and open it up. 
Start off pretty smart by Lego. Smart move by Lego. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put our Rebel Ewing pilot inside the cockpit. Okay, before I do that, I'm gonna show you guys the cockpit real quick. <laughs> this is tile piece is printed, just so let you guys know. It's kinda of opened in there, but it, that's okay. I don't mind. <laughs> and so we're gonna stick our U Rebel Ewing pilot in there. Get all nice and cozy in there. And that's what it looks like inside the cockpit. And so now we have them in there. Now that we now that we have them in there, we're gonna close it up. That's what it looks like in there. You really see them. It's nice. This cockpit piece is all frayed as usual, as always. And so now that we got that out of the way, now we have our pilot in there ready to take off. Now we're gonna put in the troops. Now these doors here, these are all parade, uh, not parade, the, the, these are all stickers on the side. Same thing on this side here. And we open this up, there's a little handle right here. That you use to help open it up like that. Really reminds me of the gunship. And he, as you can see guys, I already have the troops in there. I got the Rebel Cooper in there, and I also have Bastan in there. And... The main can, the cans inside the gun, not the gunship, inside the U-Wing. These are these are studs, stud, it's sure, so I need to shoot studs. <laughs> okay, I'm getting the battle packs, battle pack weapons. Just move out like that, and you can see them on the side, which is pretty cool. You saw they go man the cans on the side and blast a enemy stormtroopers from the ground from the Rebel Ewing. So yeah, and the reason why I already got them in here, guys, is because of how hard it is for. It, it was that hard for me to get sure the main figures inside this area because. They give you a lot of spacing here for like at least three May figures, but it's really hard to get your hands in there because of the lack of space for your hands. And so I think that was, that's a big flaw about this vehicle. That's the only flaw I see about this vehicle is that I think Lego should have made this rear bomb part a little bigger so, you, so you're, you're able to keep your hands in there and really be, be able to get the May figure in there a lot easier. Because what I ended up needing to do was that I needed to take this whole door almost out. So I could get my hand in there, and so I could get the main figures in there, and just at least one main figure in there. So that really kind of annoying me, but it, it's a pretty simple as such. But for a kid, um, I don't know. I really don't know. It, it's really, it's really lacking. So yeah, we have the troops in there as such. So we're gonna go ahead and close it up. And so now that we got our troops in there, we got the Stein and the Rebel Trooper in there. We're ready to fly as such. And what you guys, just let you guys know, this is a trans clear thick piece. And I think this is the same that clear trans clear piece we got in the UCS X Wing. I do not have that set at the moment, but from seeing reviews and such, they, they were saying that it was the same set piece. So, I can avoid that. It really makes sense. And it, now that, we, but because I don't have the UCS, UCS X Wing, I can get, I, I kind of get an idea of how big that vehicle is just, just by looking at the cockpit here, this is actually the cockpit clear, clear piece that they use for that set, for that big X-Wing. So now that you know, have this piece, I can tell how big that vehicle is. I can tell you that, guys, that vehicle is probably going to be big. <laughs> I plan on getting that vehicle eventually, that, that big UCS X-Wing eventually, because I have the TIE Fire UCS set, so I might as well have the UCS X-Wing. So once I get that set, I, I don't really know how big it will be, but now that I have this piece, I can really tell how big it is. And so, these are stickers right here as well. The reason why they use this piece for the bottom part, I have no idea. <laughs> I was trying to figure out, as I was building this, I was like, why did, they do, why did they put that there? Why did they put that kind of color in that area when it's not going to be used for nothing? And I got, really got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> I got no idea why they did that. And so now we're gonna get to the main, to the last feature is the Springer shoes. As always, I like to make the Spr Springer shoes for last. And so, because we used to, we usually see that stuff the most. Is that really the newest one ever? And so, the, how we shoot these shoes is that there's uh, these top pieces here, guys, and they're kind of sticking up in the air a little bit. You just push those down, and you'll shoot the sh Springer shoes. So yeah, because they're like we're literally right here in the front. So what we're gonna do is, guys, is we're gonna open the wings up, so it, it'll have a, a little more space to shoot, and it will hit the wings at all. 
and this would be the effort. Gotta use Jin Ursula and Captain Cassian and Andor as the primary target. I know. It's, it's, gonna be like, it's gonna be like the target caster, oh god, but it's okay. I don't really care. <laughs> it, it's just for. It's just for showing off, showing off examples and such of how to do it. If you guys have no idea how to use these. So, you guys shoot them at the same time here. Well, we killed the main character of the movie, but we didn't kill the captain. So, <laughs> we killed Jim Ursa and Galen Ursa's daughter. <laughs> Which is very, really unfortunate. Um, <laughs> very, very unfortunate for Jim Ursa. <laughs> I guess Darth Vader is going to be able to kill her now. <laughs> so, because I'm assuming that Darth Vader is going to end up killing everybody because we seen in a new trailer from Thursday that one clear shot Darth Vader from the front view of Vader. We just see him coming into a room where Director Craig is, and I can tell. Oh man, Director Craig's dead. <laughs> he is dead. He is really dead now. <laughs> he bears best. Oh man. <laughs> That's how I felt like. Oh crap, he is dead. <laughs> He's dead. He is doomed. <laughs> He's doomed for dear life. I to get a drink in my Pepsi. <laughs> and so. Overall, guys, the Rebel Ewing is a very interesting set. And so, I got it. I, I like this vehicle. I like the play features and such. The only big flaw I have about this vehicle set is the cockpit doors and such. It opens the doors ain't too bad, but really, it, getting your hands in there and put the main figures in there is kind of difficult. Especially, even for a kid. Even for, even for me, I'm 17 years old, collecting this stuff, and I have a hard time getting the main figures in there. And I'm like, Man, just imagine how hard it would be for an eight-year-old <laughs> or even a seven-year-old. Like, wow, it's pretty hard, pretty difficult. Because it, it, if I was it, back in my day, it was it was starting to collect the stuff back when I was like nine or ten. If I tried putting the May, May figures in there for this set, I would have had the hardest time ever. <laughs> I really would. I really would have. And so that's the only big flaw I have about this set. And so. Everything else is perfect. Well, all the other stuff about the set, main figure is perfect. Everything, perfect, except that one big flaw. And so, let's get into the box, guys, and then we'll get into the final thoughts. So here's the box, guys. As you can see, this is a very long, very big, and thin box at the same time. And it's basically, almost the size of the Tie Striker box. As you can see, guys, we got the Lego Star Wars logo on top, as always. We got the Death Trooper and TIE Fire Rogue One art. This is pretty cool. Love the art. For all the logos and stuff, for, for Star Wars stuff now. And here's the main figure right now. All showing that they're all exclusive and new. Here's the Disney logo on the far bottom right hand corner. Here's the set information, the age range, the set number, the name of the set, and the piece count. And here's the main balcony here for the front showing off the Ewing and the main figures and I gotta say it's very nice action scene here and it looks like to me it, it this is taking place on Jaya I think I can't really tell but I think that's where it's taking place at Jaya I think it looks like so yeah that's pretty interesting and so let's take a look at the back of the box here and here's all the main features to the set here and uh, the opening cockpit, the screw of shears, the opening doors and such, it, it putting the main figures in there, and the movable wings and such, the opening wings, closing wings, everything. And here's a little action scene. Here's another action scene here with Captain Endor at the back. Doing her so Obi Wan just 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 got out of the Rebel U wing fire, Rebel Trooper firing at the enemy, a baston being in the can on the side, in the doorway. And it looks like it, it's in the it, they had the wings out and open and while it's on the ground so that might just so that may be the landing mode guys that's pretty what it's gonna look like on the ground when it's on the ground so that's pretty interesting that's pretty interesting <laughs> that's pretty odd and so here's the the um Lego Star Wars Force Builder app at advertisement on the back of the box which I don't really care for much so not gonna talk anymore about that and so that's the box guys and for this Rebel Ewing Fire Lego Star Wars set, and so let's end off the review with the Paw Thoughts. Okay, so overall, guys, the Rebel Ewing Fire. This is a great set to have, especially if you guys are looking for the main characters and, and mostly the main cast of Rogue One. 
Craig's, uh, to the Director Craig show. And so, if you get this set in the Director Craig show, I think that'll be a good combo for you guys. If you guys have the money for it, because this set is $80, and Director Craig's set is going for $90. So if you guys have like 200 bucks on you, uh, on you, then this is, this is uh, two good sets to have, like to get. Because... It's got, they both have the main cast, most, most of the main cast for Rogue One. And so, yeah, because they got Jin or so, because you're, you're gonna be getting Jin or so, Captain, Captain Kazan and or Ed Bastan, or Bastan, and, and a couple of Rebel Troopers. So, this is a good way to get Jin or so, and such. Like, getting Felicity Jones in Lingo Force, so that's pretty cool. And the vehicle itself, this is a great vehicle, I like the vehicle, and the very 100% look, uniqueness look to it um, regarding how weird looking it is <laughs> I really like the vehicle um, I'm probably just gonna get one I'm just gonna have this one and not get another one because we only seen one in the movie um, um, the only flaw I have about this set the only con about this set is the uh, ability to put the main figures inside the, the rear the bomb of the Ewing where they, they store the where they store the troopers and such we open the doors on the side and such it's kind of hard to keep your hands in there and get the main figures in there. And so, that's a big con to the set. And because if, you, if you're able to put troop, if they give you the ability to put troopers, in, you know, like main figures in there, they give, like, they give the ability to have more room in there so you get your hands in there and get them in there easily. You can't really exactly get them in there that easily in this one, in, in this big, in this set. So, that's really the only flaw I have about this set. Other than that, this is a great set. I, 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 really, like, I, I really like it. Uh, and I highly, I highly recommend it. Ran right to Crash Show. Because that would be a good combo. Director Crash Show and the Rebel Ewing Fire. That's a good combo. I got it. It'll be a great combo because you'll get but the majority of the cast for Rogue One. You'll be getting the Death Troopers. You'll be getting Craig. Um, you, you're going to get Jinger, so you're going to get Kazzy and Dory. You're going to get the Stick and Bastan. You, you're going to be getting a lot of the main cast. You're going to get Boy Rook and such. But yeah. I highly recommend getting this set. If you guys are gonna be getting the crack shell set, then I highly recommend getting this set along with that one. Because you get you gonna get the main cast and you're gonna get a great vehicle. So I'm gonna rate this set guys a 8 out of 10. 8.5 8 out of 10 because of that one big flaw about the ability to put the main figures inside the doors. You know, inside the cockpit not the, not the cockpit, um the passenger or like the viewer the rear bomb of the Ewing is such the passage, passenger area itself. So, yeah, it, 8.5 out of 10 rain for the rain of this set. And so that's gonna be it, guys. So be sure to try to subscribe and comment down below on my channel. And I'll see you guys in the next and last Lego Star Wars Rogue One set review crack show. That's gonna be the last one I had to review. And then after that, it's gonna be for 2017. Lego Star Wars sets for 2017 after the Rogue One movie comes out. Um, then in December, right before Rogue One comes out, it's gonna be my main figure collection video and my twi my 2017 Lego Star Wars Army video. Coming, it's gonna be coming right to you guys right before Rogue One comes out, like during the week of Rogue One. And so, yeah, I'll be seeing you guys in those videos. I'll be seeing you guys in vlogs throughout the fall and such, and throughout the winter before Rogue One, just to, to keep you guys updated on what's going on. And so, if there's going to be another vlog coming up soon, this coming week, to explain to you guys what I've been doing for the last few months. No, no, not a few months, so a few weeks since my last vlog. And so, have a great day guys. Bye.